In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone, and I welcome you all here today under these very different circumstances, to say the least, uh, but uh, we, we do what we have to do. And today, I welcome uh, Jean and uh, Stephen and Chris and the families here, and all of Joe's family, some close friends who are here with us today, and all those watching on live stream, I reach out to them as well, and as we gather today to uh, thank God for the life of this great uh, Christian gentleman. And uh, I go back a long ways with this family, so I'm really happy to be here today to, to be part of this ceremony, this Mass today. The first day we're able to have a Mass uh, during our funeral. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries then, today we reflect on Joe's baptism. He was brought into the church and he was made a child of God. He was given new life in Christ and clothed with that garment of salvation, a symbol of purity. So today we greet the body of our brother Joe and surround him with the church's prayer. We commend our brother Joe to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to him in baptism would be fulfilled. our opening song for our procession is Amazing Grace. Please stand now. 
quite fitting to have a Mass here today for uh, Joel and um, Jean, of course. They came here all the time to Mass and uh, never missed. So we thank them for their dedication to this beautiful basilica in our parish. And we pray that this celebration of Mass may be a sign of comfort and prayers for you today. Consolation. So let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Job, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now I'd uh, ask... uh, we have our readings now, and our first reading from Ecclesiastes, I ask Stephen to come forward, and the reading is right there on that, and I'll ask everybody else to remain seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable at this time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is found on page 607 of the Catholic Book of Worship. The Lord is my shepherd, 607.
my head you do anoint with oil. My cup is brimming second reading. I'll ask Christopher to come forward, please. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I'm already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, please be seated. It is uh, with sadness today we gather with Joe's family, especially his wife of almost 50 years, Jean and his sons Christopher and Jennifer, 
Stephen, the grandchildren Regan and Jared and Liam and Addison and the rest of Joe's family and the many friends watching online today. And we gather at this mass of Christian burial to entrust Joe now to the love and grace and mercy of God. We gather also in great hope to support one another and to encourage each other with the assurances of faith in the resurrection of Christ the Lord and in the power of his love. To you, Joe's family, I extend the loving prayers and sympathy of the entire Basilica Parish family, a parish to which Joe and Jean were so dedicated. He had such a strong faith, you know, Joe did, and we all can take a great example from him. So may our presence here today in this beautiful historical basilica and in the presence of Christ and his church community lift you up and give you comfort and peace. And we reflect, you know, in our funeral mass, there's so much symbolism of baptism, the white garment and the holy water at the end. We talk about that too, as well as the, you know, our baptismal candle, the Paschal Easter candle. We reflect that in baptism we began our journey of faith and we were made children of God and part of the church community and we began our journey through life back to the arms of a loving and merciful God. Joe, first of all, fulfilled his baptismal call. He's called to his vocation to family life as a loving son and devoted brother in a large family. And his vocation to family life he fulfilled so well in his life as a loving husband, father, and grandfather. You know, each one of us was made in the image and likeness of God and each one of us, therefore, is a gift of God to the world. And we come with our own gifts and talents, uh, you know, that we have been given in our life. And we're asked to share them with other people. It was so nice to uh, sit with uh, Jean and Christopher and Stephen and to talk about Joe. Um, they, made, they told me that family was everything to him. And he worked all his life with Newfoundland light and power to provide for his family. He always put them first, sacrificed for them as parents do, and supported them in all they did. Joe, we know, had a great love of sports and was an avid athlete playing baseball and hockey, and especially not soccer, but football. I was told I had to say that. He was inducted into the Newfoundland and Labrador Soccer Football Association Hall of Fame. He was a good friend to so many because they would see his joy, that's the word, they, the joy in the life he lived, joy in dancing, joy in ice and roller skating, joy in the many sports he played, joy in the St. Pat's green and gold, joy in walking his dog, joy in fishing with his brothers, all those joyful times. Just reading, if you read through the online comments about him, common comments that came out were a great man, a fine gentleman, a proud dad, a beautiful soul, a person of joy, a talented athlete. These are the common things you heard. You know, if you're dedicated to sports, it demands certain qualities that were evident in Joe. First of all, perseverance. It is all about continuing when both your body and your mind demand that you give up. Joe's faith life was like that. He persevered in his faith. He refused to conform to the values of this world, but had his sight set on the values of spiritual things above. He was a man of compassion and justice, especially for those in need. I am sure Joe's deep faith was the rock he leaned on when the storms of life came. And sports demands, you know, a lot of discipline. Lots of practice is required to improve physical training to get your body into shape. It all takes time and personal discipline. And Joe's discipline extended not only to his physical life, but also to the rest of his life, his spiritual life even. Making that effort to communicate with God in prayer and to participate in the life of the church here at the Basilica Parish. And sports is all about, you know, bringing unity and peace among people. It brings people together from different races and religions. And Joe was a man of peace like that who always sought to bring people together. Pope Francis, who, as you know, is from Argentina and is a great, great soccer fan, football fan, as they say there, too. He said that sports is a privileged place of unity and encounter. 
It is where we can experience the joy of competing to reach a goal together, participating in a team where success or defeat is shared and overcome. Sports, he said, promotes the discovery of the human potential that incites us to unveil the beauty of creation and of the human being made in the image and likeness of God. You never heard sports talked about like that before, did you? Sports help us face the challenges of life with courage and honesty, he said, with joy and serene confidence in the future. He says to give the best of oneself in sports helps us to inspire, to aspire to holiness. All of these qualities of sports, I am sure, helped make Joe Brown the man he became. The world is better because he was in it, because he was a real example of a person who made a difference in his own way, unique way. He was a light in the darkness of our world, an example of the love and mercy of God. And God blessed you, his family, with such a special gift of Joe's presence in your lives. Can celebrate and thank God today for that gift. You know, at each Mass, which is Eucharist, the word is a Greek word for thanksgiving. We thank God for the great gift of his son who loved us so much he died to save us. And he was raised from the dead and offers to his faithful ones the same gift of resurrection to eternal life with the saints and the holy ones that have gone before us. Today at this funeral mass, we gave thanks to God for the gift of Joe. In the second reading, we talked about Joe indeed fighting the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. Now there is in store for him the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to him on that day, and not only to him, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You know, we look at it at the end of our life, how will we be judged, I wonder? Well, it's very clear in Scripture how we will be judged. At the end of our lives, we will not be judged like the world judges us by how much power and riches and fame we have attained. Jesus tells us we will be judged by how we have loved others. That's it. Practical ways. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. This is how we love people, by our actions, not merely by our words. So may Joe, who has fulfilled his mission to love in this life, now go to that dwelling place made especially for him in the Father's house. May he receive his eternal reward for his good life. May he rest in the loving arms of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. I call on Barbara to come forward for the prayers of intercession. I would ask everybody to stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. For Joe, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Joe, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life in Holy Communion, May he be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our relatives and friends and all who have helped us during this time, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all of Joe's family and friends, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled in faith and confidence to pray for Joe. Strengthen our hope that we may live in expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are living in the light of God, especially Joe's beloved sister Barbara, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, especially all the members of Joe's family, his parents, brothers, and sisters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, 
Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we'll begin our second part of our Mass today, which is a, our Eucharistic prayer and offertory. And we would like for you to please be seated now for that. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us stand. Let us pray. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Joel, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with all the angels and saints, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
therefore, in need, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant, Job, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially the members of Joe's family who have gone before him. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us, our Father, our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And by gesture of a nod, just simply... Offer peace to one another, the peace of Christ. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I Lord, am, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion chant is number 6.6 .6 in the Celebrate and Song. It's One Love Released. The refrain is on your paper. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Joel may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Joe. May our farewell express our affection for him. May these our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys him in death itself. In baptism, Joe shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May he be welcomed in the glory of eternal life. Holy water represents his baptism today. As a sign of respect for our brother Joe, we let his incense, which is the from the Middle Eastern plants, which are used, you know, the whole beautiful thing of preserving the body and all that in the ancient times. We have it here as a symbol of our prayer, rising up to God, who has called Joe to share in his glory. Please join in singing Song of the Angels, number 10C in the Catholic Book of Worship. May songs of the angels welcome you and guide you along your way. May the smiles of the darkness turns in 
your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Joe in assured certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Joe in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Joe forever. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank all of you for your presence here today. I'd like to thank the Brother Rice Connection here, Jacinta, for wanting to come here and do the music. This is lovely. And Patty Fowler, back in the organist, thank her as well for the beautiful music. Paul's Funeral Home for their professional service. And all those out there who are listening, who have helped the family in any way, we thank you and bless God bless you. And I'd like to thank the family for helping me with this wonderful tribute to Joe, which you'll find on the back of this particular uh, bulletin. And there's some extra copies to take with you on your way out. Dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is We Shall Go Out, number 6.25 in a Celebrate in Song. Oh, go. 